What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of Google's first foray into the world of tablets. This is the Nexus 7. Uh, we've had a few days to play with it, I've had a chance to put it to the paces, get to know how it works, and finally we are ready to share our thoughts with it. So is this the home run that Google's hoping it's gonna be? Is it a Kindle Fire or maybe even an iPad killer? Stick around, let's find out. All right, so let's start the review by talking about the hardware. It's going to come in at 7.8 inches by 4.7 inches by 0.4 inches thick, and it weighs a pretty light 11.9 ounces. The soft touch back feels absolutely tremendous in the hand. It's a little bit textured, so when you hold it, you definitely feel like you're not going to drop it. I didn't notice any sort of heat as well coming from it. Really nice uh, heat dissipation. Another thing I really like about it is the way the tablet sits. With previous seven inch tablets, so I'm looking at you, Kindle Fire, they were just big monolithic slabs. The Nexus 7 actually is a little bit tapered. So when you pick it up, you can put your fingers right under the edges and lift it right up. It's a little bit more inviting. I know it's something you're gonna have to see for yourself to experience. But the tablet really does feel like it just wants to be picked up and and held. For a tablet this small, the speakers are also pretty tremendous. That one speaker down there at the bottom actually does a pretty good job of bumping some serious beats. There are two microphones built in here. You've got one found on the top and one found on the side. So any way you're holding it, it already has a microphone facing up. So that way, if you're doing video chat, person will always be able to hear you crisp and clear. And actually, it worked very, very nicely. One of the gripes I did have with it is this tremendous bezel. It's really big all the way around. Now, certainly it's nice when you're holding it in portrait mode, a place to set your thumbs. But when you're turning it over a landscape, there's a lot of extra real estate here. This is something that most tablets have been affected with. Giant bezel syndrome. Big chin, we can call it Jay Leno syndrome if you want. The display is a seven inch effect with a resolution of 1280 by 800. That's an HD display, and for those of you math whizzes, that's a 216 PPI. The angle here is also tremendous. Really, any way you hold it, you're gonna have a very nice view. You don't have much degradation no matter which way you're viewing it. Text as well is crisp and clear. I had no pixelation issues and it looked very nice. And it was actually really comfortable to read a book. I'm not the biggest fan of reading books on backlit displays. This one actually worked very nice. and didn't hurt my eyes. Integra 3, as we've seen with other tablets, is extremely capable and this guy is no exception. It handles everything that we threw at it and it handled it greatly. It's got a Tegra 3 quad-core processor clocked at 1.3 gigahertz. Giga RAM is gonna come in two configurations, eight gig or 16 gig. Video playback was extremely smooth even at 1080p clips. I was able to open applications and run pretty intensive games without any sort of stutter. Any Android lag that we've seen in the past is completely gone. I attribute that to the combination of Tegra 3 and also Project Butter found in Android 4.0. Uh, it is just blistering fast to use. So if you're worried about Android lag or other tablets you've used, maybe something that had honeycomb, worry not. This is going to be a really quick experience for you. NFC is also a nice addition. If you want to pick up the Nexus Q, for example, you can just rub this guy over the top with the Nexus Q and you can pair it. If you want to use NFC for other options, you've got that available as well. Wi-Fi only, no cellular data here. I would have liked to have had a cellular radio built in here. Now certainly I know that would have added to the price point and would have had to deal with some carrier contract issues. But if people that wanted to pay that extra premium would have been certainly nice to have data anywhere you go, especially with a very pocketable size like seven inches. I would have liked to have been able to get my 4G on anywhere I was. The new Google search is awesome. We did a video comparing the new Google search to Siri and Google search was really impressive and it was just absolutely awesome to use. Let's do a few examples here. What's the weather? It's 71 degrees and mostly cloudy in Irvine. Here's the forecast for the next few days. And the voice is really kind of clear and not so robotic. Other voice assistants we've seen have a very, very monotone robotic voice. This one's got a little bit of personality to it. Who won the Angels game? The Angels beat the Blue Jays 10 to six just works very well. Google Now is also surprisingly useful. If you don't know what it is, essentially it's a way to sort of pull in all of your Google information and all the helpful ways Google can assist you. If you want to launch it, all you have to do is hold down the home button, drag up to where it says Google, and you're presented with a whole bunch of cards. Something else new in Jelly Bean that I really found useful are new notifications. I always found notification trade to be very handy, but now you've gotten more used to it. So in addition to having a new fancy font, you can interact with notifications as well. So right here, we've got a screenshot that was captured. So I could share it directly from here. I can go ahead and email 
email it or whatever I like. Uh, that same thing's true with missed calls or text messages. You can reply to them directly from notifications. So certainly a small addition, but one that I really found useful. Only one camera on this guy, 1.2 megapixels. One strange omission though is no dedicated camera application. You can launch camera whether or not you're doing some video chatting or doing something in Google Plus, but there isn't such a standard application that you could launch it and snap a photo if you want using the front facing camera. You're gonna be relegated to using photo launchers inside of applications. A positive or negative is that this looks like a big phone, and that's really the direction that we're taking with the Jelly Bean. It looks like a phone on a larger screen. So whether or not you like that or you dislike that, it's gonna come down to a matter of personal preference. One thing I do wish the Jelly Bean did was rotate. When I rotate the screen into landscape, I really wish it would rotate it with me. With completely virtual buttons, it certainly makes little sense that this won't rotate, the buttons don't reorientate themselves at all. It doesn't do anything when you hold it like this. Another cool thing is Google Currents as well. I found it surprisingly useful, a great way to catch up on my news, and the translate feature was sort of neat as well. If you speak another language or you want to know what's going on in a different country, it's going to be a great way to sort of get an overall view of what's going on. It's not going to translate perfectly, grammar is not going to work, but at least you can sort of on the surface understand what is being said. Said. Google Maps as well is surprisingly useful here. So now you can get Google Maps offline without data, which is really handy considering this guy doesn't have cellular radio. So if you want to download the maps for your city, throw them on your device, you at least can be able to figure out how to get places or look up phone numbers. Something else that's actually been really surprisingly handy is the new YouTube. It looks like the YouTube website. It works like the YouTube website. Content plays smoothly. You can actually load it from here. I really was not a big fan of the default YouTube application that Google was shipping on their devices which doesn't make sense because Google owns YouTube. Uh, the iOS experience was far superior, but that has definitely been rectified here in Jelly Bean. So if you're a big YouTube watcher like me, you're gonna be really happy with what Google's done. Let's talk about performance. Really good. Everything worked very smoothly, as I mentioned earlier. There's no Android lag. Everything I threw at this, it handled perfectly. I didn't have to close applications. I didn't have to do any application management. I didn't have any stutter when playing 1080p videos. Again, there's no lag. I ran it through Quadrant, and I got a score of 3,572. So that's lower than something like HD C1X or the Asus EPAD Transformer Prime, but still is a very capable tablet. Powering it is a 4,325 milliamp hour battery. Google's claiming eight hours of battery life. We got seven, and that was on brightness turned down to a moderate level and just while playing video. So you're not going to get that full eight hours that was advertised, but you might get actually close to it. One of the big problems with the device, though, it might be for some, is local storage. Limited to eight or 16 gigs might not be enough for everything you want to do. A micro SD card slot would have been very nice. Now, Google's touting the ability to stream content so you don't have to store stuff locally. But being a Wi-Fi only device, if you're out on the road or you don't have a Wi-Fi connection, you essentially don't have access to all of your information. So I'd have really liked to have had micro SD expansion be an option here. So the conclusion, this isn't just a great tablet for 200 bucks. It's a great tablet, period. If you're looking to get anything from the tablet market, you owe it yourself to look at the Nexus 7. And that includes folks who might be tempted to go to Apple's iPad. For 200 bucks, you can get two of these before you can even consider getting into Cupertino's latest. So while this guy's probably more aimed at the Kindle Fire. Those that are cross-shopping any tablets really should take a look. You're not going to be disappointed. We're going to give this guy a 9 and an editor's choice. I wish it had micro SD expansion. I wish Jelly Bean rotated. I wish there were some dedicated controls for camera and possibly a rear-facing camera. But overall, this is one of the best tablets we've tested and the price point makes it just that more awesome. The Nexus 7 I recommend wholeheartedly. If you're looking to get a tablet, again, you owe it to yourself to take a look at it. I'm John Renger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check us out for the latest and greatest tech news. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.